and I'm the director of design at Zeal. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Redwood, um, but first let's just talk about the world in general. Uh, there's a lot of problems out there. You don't need me to tell you that bad things happen. You look on the news every day, but instead of focusing on the bad, let's talk about the good and all the positive things that have happened. And really, over the last 10, 20, 30 years, a lot of the good things have happened through technology. We've put people on the moon. We're able to connect with people instantaneously on the other side of the world. We have people watching live right now. And with COVID, it's allowed us to continue to work and move forward and make progress in two years when it seems like the rest of the world is really slowed down. So I could go on, but the point that I want to make is that for something where there's so much change to happen, really only half of 1% of the world can code. It's crazy that you can have that much impact with such a small percentage of people. And the cool part is, that's us. Like, that's room for us to celebrate that we are part of that half percent. So we are the coders. We're the people that are making change. We make a positive impact in the world. So if coding is so important, why don't more people do it? Well, it's hard. <laughs> you don't need me to tell you that either. We've all struggled with those bugs with those semicolons, with the casing that's messed up. There's so many frameworks and languages and packages that we have to try and figure out. So I started coding 20 years ago. So before you do the math, I started when I was 16. And so I kind of grew up adding on knowledge. It's kind of difficult now because there's so much to learn, but I slowly just started adding on things. I started as a front-end developer because I love design. I love being able to make these beautiful user interfaces and create these beautiful user experiences for people, but the truth of the matter is it doesn't really do anything. You really need a server and a database. So fortunately, JavaScript has changed a lot of that. It's made the back end more approachable to someone like me that's familiar with the front end. So I started learning JavaScript with jQuery, again, dating myself. But it allowed me to make my designs interactive, but honestly, my websites were still dumb. You can't really save state. So the back end has always eluded me. So it's hard to learn new things. Maybe you've seen this curve before, but this is when you're trying to learn something new. So a lot of times you have a lot of confidence, but very little wisdom. So people would say this is the, pound, the peak of Mount Stupid. You really don't have a lot to back up your confidence. And then you realize, I don't know what I don't know. So you kind of go to this valley of despair. There's so much to learn and so much growth that needs to happen, but then as you slowly learn things, you are enlightened, and then you eventually are able to sustain that knowledge. So for me, tools like Redwood and Prisma have allowed me to make the Mac end approachable, and it really was love at first sight. So that change, that learn curve that you see, really flattened for me with Redwood because it made the back end so approachable. As David mentioned, I first learned about Redwood, or really explored Redwood, when we had David on our podcast. So I co-host a podcast called Compressed FM with James Q. Quick. So we had David on. It's episode number 54, if you want to go listen. And I think it also goes to show that I really have no association with David or with Redwood. This was just a happy coincidence. But the selling point for me with Redwood was really their generators and the fact that it would create a lot of code for you and then it provided everything out of the box. So you might be thinking, oh, gross, <laughs> everything out of the box. I would really rather make my own decisions. But the thing that's nice about Redwood is it creates, it adds all the components that I would be using anyways. So with Storybook or React or Prisma or GraphQL or TypeScript or Jest, it's all built in out of the box. So you don't have to add those packages and those settings yourself. So just to kind of prove a point a little bit more, I have a series on YouTube for testing with React. And I have one video in that series specifically for just setting up tests and getting everything running. If you look at it, this video is 10 and a half minutes. So the crazy thing is that Redwood makes that a whole lot easier, and I'll get back to that. So um, the back end is no longer this elusive thing, but it is still magical. These tools allow us to be full stack. So if you are a front-end developer here, or you're weary of learning something new, I want to show you just how easy it is to get started with Redwood. So I decided, because um, I'm crazy like this, as David said, I have these wild hair ideas. I was going to make an app specifically for Prisma Day. So one of the things that I wanted to revisit with this app idea is the idea of that catalyst for change. How can I make something that's going to 
make a difference. Well, change is kind of this lofty idea that you might have. It means a lot of things to a lot of different people. And really, the easiest way to create change is to ask questions, because when you ask the right people the right questions, you suddenly get knowledge. Your perspective changes. So for the app that I created, I called this Ask Me Anything Anytime, or AMA Anytime. So imagine if Twitter and Quora had a baby. So Twitter is great because it allows you to post something and interact with somebody at a specific moment in time. Quora allows you to ask a question to the general public and anybody can respond. So this idea kind of combines those two things. People can have a profile and other people can come and ask you questions there. Um, so there's a lot of places that already do this. People have this on, say, GitHub repositories, GitHub discussions, Reddit, Zoom, Twitter. But this would be an app to have all of that in one place. So as I mentioned, I'm a designer. The design part is easy for me. I started pulling images together to create a mood board, started sketching some ideas, and then put something together in Figma, and this is what I came up with. So I wanted to push the boundaries a little bit more with this design. Um, so it has a little bit more personality than what you might consider in a normal product design. Um, so to build it out, really the easiest way to get started with Redwood is to say, yarn create Redwood app. And my app is called AMA Anytime, so that's the project name. It creates a folder called AMA Anytime and puts all the code inside. So Redwood is going to generate a bunch of code, and at the end it gives you some commands that you can run. So this is my folder structure. I have a web folder for my front end and an API folder for the back end. So there's a nice mono repo that keeps everything together. And then since I mentioned testing earlier, to get your tests set up, this is the beautiful part. Uh, you just run yarn redwood test and magic. <laughs> it all works. So my tests are up and running. And then I mentioned Storybook. If you're familiar with front end code, you can create all of your front end components and put them in Storybook for other people to be able to access. So for Storybook, you don't have to do any settings either. You just run yarn redwood Storybook and magic. <laughs> It's up and running. So you're seeing an error here because I don't have any stories created. So as soon as you create your first story, that error will disappear. So as you start creating your components, you can say yarn redwood, and that's RW short for redwood. G is short for generate. So generate a component, and then you name your components. That could be navigation. It could be header. It could be footer. And <laughs> magic. So uh, the cool part is when you create that component, out of the box, it will give you a storybook file, it will give you a test file, and it will give you your component file. So already, I love that Redwood is encouraging you to put the best practices of coding in place. So the next thing you can do is start to build out your layout. So you can use Yarn Redwood Generate Layout and Generate Pages and give those names. And here, you'll see that it created some code for your layouts. And again, you can test those layouts and create stories for those layouts. Um, so as you're working with these different layouts and components, it will also have a routes file. And if you look, this set wrap tag will allow you to create a nested wrapper, which is very convenient as you're building things out. Um, and then if Tailwind is your jam, just wanted to include this, how easy the setup is. You can run a setup UI Tailwind CSS, and it will create your post CSS file, and it will set up everything with Tailwind, so you don't have to worry about that either. So once you have your beautiful storybook built out with all of your components, now we get to make that leap into the back end. So it's a big, fun jump. And this is the part, really, where you're crossing over from being that front end developer to being a back end developer. If you're running Postgres locally, that's just as easy as running that create DB uh, database name to get that up and running. And here I have two lines, because one is for my production, or really my development, since it's on my local machine, and then a test database to run all of the tests. From there, what you would do is you would add your uh, Postgres connection strings. Now we'll he hear from Planet Scale later, so if you wanted to use MySQL instead, you would plug in a provider name here for MySQL with the Planet Scale databases, or you can use Postgres. So the nice thing is you can easily swap out whichever database platform you want to use or you're familiar with. So let's look at the design, and I'm just going to start making a list of all the dynamic pieces of information that I have here. I have a avatar, a cover image, a name, a username, a bio, my location, a URL, the people that I'm following, the people that are following me. 
I have the person that's asking me a question, the question itself, the answer. So I'm gonna make a list of all these things, I'm sure you guys have probably done this before, and see how they're all connected. So really all I need is a users and a questions table. You can make that a little bit more complicated if you wanted to blow out the scope, like I did here. But you're gonna take your schema.prisma file and list all of those things out, along with the type of data that it is. So once you have that done, you can run yarn redwood prisma migrate dev and magic. My database is set up. So from here, I can scaffold out, say, my questions section by just running yarn redwood generate scaffold and then the name. And that name matches my database. So let's see what a scaffold actually does. So here, on the back end, it creates an SDL file and a services file. So you can see that right there. And you can actually run these individually, but a scaffold will do it all together. So I could say SDL question. But you'll notice that in the Prisma file, or the, S, excuse me, the SDL file, it creates a type there with the questions, and then it's connected on the left with the actual service. And so if you look at that, that's Prisma running. It says find many. So that's a lot easier to write than a complicated SQL call. So if you scroll on down, this is another custom one that I wrote, but it's, so it's easy to add to the ones that are already existing within the generator, and those two names line up. So I don't have to write any resolvers, which is, for me, huge. So the next thing that that scaffold creates is it creates a few cells, and cells is a unique concept to Redwood. So what that does is, you can see that right there, the question cell, and you can, again, run question or cells individually. You don't have to have just the scaffold do it but that creates a GraphQL call, so this makes it accessible on the front end. So that cell is gonna live on the front end. It's gonna call the GraphQL section of code, so I get all my data out of the database, and then it creates a loading component, an empty component, a failure component, and a success component. So the nice thing is, instead of having to write conditionals to handle all those different cases, you can actually pass in components, and it will handle that state for you. So when it's loading, it knows to handle the loading component. When it's empty, it will send the empty component, failing and then success, which is really helpful. As you're working with GraphQL and trying to pull in those queries, there's actually a GraphQL playground that is included so that you can basically test those queries and mutations to make sure they're working before including them within your cells and components. And there's also a Yarn Redwood Prisma Studio command, which will give you a WYSIWYG editor where you can manually add data, which is really helpful that as you're building things out, you're able to test that. If you want to do that programmatically, Redwood also offers a scripts seed file where you can dynamically add information. So as you're building out your website or application, in my case, the AMA Anytime, one of the things that I want to do is to be able to add authentication. And this is another piece that can be sometimes complicated and a little overwhelming. Redwood does have support for third-party providers, but it also gives you a lot of those tools out of the box. So for example, I can run Yarn Redwood Setup Auth, DB Auth, and add some information to my user model. And then I would want to generate a secret session key. So running this will automatically create a unique session key and stick it in my environmental variables. And then once I run yarn redwood generate db auth, that will create my routes for my login, sign up, forgot password, and reset password. So magic. Uh, if you're trying to protect pages, one of the nice things that you can do is within your routes file, you can use a private wrapper, and then you can tell it where you want it to redirect if that page is private. And that's all it takes in order to protect a certain route. If you wanted to protect something that's inside a page, like a component, Redwood would give you a use auth hook that you can use to wrap your component so that it will only be available if something is logged in. So all this stuff is right out of the box. So it's simply a matter of running these scaffolds and generators and then being able to update the styles that you have and connect that with Storybook. So just to wrap up, some of the beautiful things that I've discovered about Redwood is it really creates these guardrails in the best way so that you're creating code that's clean and smart, but it's also providing generators that make it easy to approach the back end. It generates a lot of those CRUD operations that you have to do in almost every single application and makes it incredibly easy. 
So uh, if you would like to connect with me, I'm Self Teach Me on most platforms. So you can find me on Twitter. Again, I mentioned my podcast, Compressed FM, or YouTube. So are there any questions? Uh, hi, great talk. Thank you. Um, I love Redwood too, and I use it too. I have a question. You showed the Redwood setup um, Tailwind command, uh, yep. UI Tailwind command. Now, you mentioned that you love design. Um, imagine there's like a setup design something something command. What could Redwood generate or like set up for you as a designer um, that will help you get started with a project? Was there something missing? Like yeah, I don't think that it's necessarily anything missing because if you do, too, it's like this weird balance. If you do too much and take too much customization out, then you can't use it quite as much. But when there's the right amount of customization, you can do a lot. So it does offer, to your point, that UI tailwind component, which makes it really easy to style the things that you need. But it would be interesting to, I don't know, um, David, if it has like a UI Google material where it would automatically install Google material design or other components like that. Um, kind of to the same points, but uh, I see that Redwood is built on top of Webpack Bundler, and uh, main question would be like how easy it is to actually like get it out and put something new and modern like White uh, as a bundler for a whole Redwood stack. And also the same question for Jest, like how easy it would be to change it for Vtest, for example. Yeah, I think um, David could probably help me on this one, but I think they're working on hooking it to V. Did I see that? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, yeah, coming future, we'll see. Um, but I knew, do know you can also easily add on packages. So my team in particular is working on an application and they've put uh, Cypress on top of it. And that was pretty easy to do as well, so. David, do you have yeah. questions? Thank you. I, 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 was, I was actually wondering if I, well, we have, we have a couple minutes. Um, yeah, let's do it. What is missing from Redwood? What is missing? That's a good question. Um, so the two things that my team has added as we've been working on things is customizing the linter, which you guys already provide ES lint out of the box, but further customizing it for what our team needs. And then the other piece was that Cypress integration. So we had that was something that we had to add on on top of it. So I think further extensibility there. Yeah. But one of the themes, and this was in one of the questions, was that um, even though Redwood is tightly integrated, adding on taking things out, you, you were, that was possible to do yes, with what you needed. Super easy, yep, sure thing. And you can also, I should have mentioned this, I know this was a talk about uh, approaching the back end, you can decouple the front end and the back end and just deploy that front end that you need if you wanted to do something to just for sell or something like that. Yeah, and, and technically you could even decouple Prisma, so Prisma is not a requirement in Redwood. Uh, but so far, I don't know. I mean, again, why. I don't know why. <laughs> no, no one I know is actually, uh, except for experimentations, no one's taken Prisma um, out of the back. So um, that was, thank you. Oh, yeah. That made me happy on so many levels. Oh, yeah. Amy, do you need a hat? Yes, I do. Okay, you want this one? <laughs> sure. All right, there you go. This thank one's you. yours. That's a, good, that's a good one. That's, there's not any more of those. So thank you, Amy Dutton.